Father God, we pray, Father, we want to eat your word today. Father, help us know the truth. Refrain my mouth from anything that won't please you, Lord. No matter how emotional I might get, Lord, I pray that you can help us, Lord, know your truth of your word. What does the word say? What does your whole chapter by chapter of each book of the Bible say, Lord? Father, we need you. Hi, the words that Jesus has spoken, they are the Holy Spirit that gives life. We've been um, enjoying the first the book of First Corinthians. Now we're in First Corinthians chapter eight. Now I understand when the Bible speaks about being my word every day. It instructs us. I mean, I go through some things at work, my personal emotions, or uh, I go through something with some certain individuals, and. If I, I wouldn't went into the word, I wouldn't even know how to respond, you know? I'm learning. Yeah, this is awesome, man. This is the most beautiful thing you can ever find is the word of God. It's not just a book. It's not just dead letters. It's the Holy Spirit inspired. And it fills us and it teaches us what we need to know. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, we're going to eat together the Word of God. It entitles that chapter, is Food Sacrificed to Idols. Um, this is the Apostle Paul writing a letter to the church, to the Corinthians. This is the Apostle Paul today. This letter was written for today we can receive God's message of how we, how He wants us to conduct ourselves and what He wants us to know. Even mysteries, you know, that I know I believe, I believe in God that you are going to understand it. And if you don't, it's okay. Because at one time in my life, I, I understood it my way and it wasn't my way. But then I started seeing the truth. Look, the reason why it's so important to know the Word of God is because when you hear somebody preaching the gospel, we're in that last times. There's going to be a lot of false prophecy. There's going to be a lot of uh, wisdom of men, um, uh, of humans, you know, wisdom, um, interpreting the Bible how with a couple verses, how they think, what it means. But when you go directly to the whole chapter after chapter, my God, Lord Jesus, Father God, it just... You can sit there and listen and say, that's truth. Amen. But you can't just say amen out of your mouth to anything that people say. Or you can listen to it and remember. And you're going to know that if you get into the word, you know the word. You're going to listen and say, that's not truth. No matter how good it sounds and convincing, it's not true. Because Satan deceived Eve with God's words that came out of God's mouth. So how do you think we can be deceived in this world today by human wisdoms? And I'm not trying to speak against anybody. I just got to speak the truth. I got to say how it is because that way I can please God and He can give me my reward which I may not get too many from humans on earth. Which is okay, because I might. Our goal is Jesus' return. It's not your goal shouldn't be me. My goal shouldn't be you. My goal, our goal, should be the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, First Corinthians chapter eight: food sacrificed to idols. Verse 1 says, Now regarding your question about food that has been offered to idols. Yes, we know that. We all have knowledge about this issue. 
But while knowledge makes us feel important, look at this how look at how the word feels. We know about food that people have to idols, but look what the next point says. On um, verse one says the other half of verse one says, but while knowledge makes us feel important, it is love that strengthens the church. See, we can know what's right and wrong and we might feel more important than other people that might not be doing right but love for those who may not be doing right and we might know it's more important to love than to know verse 2 says anyone who claims to know all the answers doesn't really know very much verse 3 says but the person who loves God is the one whom God recognizes. God recognizes us when we love Him. Verse 4. So what about eating meat that has been offered to idols? There's a question on verse 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 4. So what about eating meat that has been offered to idols? Well, we all know that an idol is not really a God. So it doesn't matter what has been offered. It's that what you believe in. If we know that an idol is dead, a statue doesn't have power or any any god that people offer to sacrifices of food to any gods, it doesn't have any power over the god we recognize that we know, right? So it says here, so what about eating meat, right? It says here, been offered to idols. Well, we all know that an idol is not really a god and that there is only one god. Verse 5 says, there may be so-called gods both in heaven and on earth. People may be saying or believing that there's gods in heaven and earth, right? But it says, and some actually worship many gods and many lords, right? But what about us? There is one God, the Father, by whom all things were created and for whom we live. And there is one Lord, Jesus Christ. Christ, through whom all things were created, and through whom we live. Verse 7. However, not all believers know this. So we got to be merciful with others that don't know this, that there is a Lord Jesus. They might be confused. They might, they might, they might, that's all they know from birth, from generations in their family. So it says here, However, not all believers know this about what I just read about only one God, our Father, and one Lord, which is Jesus Christ. Some are accustomed to thinking of idols as being real, you know. So when they eat food that has been offered to idols, they think of it as the worship of real gods. And their weak consciences are violated. It's true that we can't win God's approval by what we eat. We don't win God's approval by what we eat because everything he made to eat is blessed, is good. It's true that we can't win God's approval by what we eat. We don't lose anything if we don't eat it and we don't gain anything if we do. Verse 9, but you must be careful so that your freedom does not cause others with a weaker conscience to stumble we must be careful we are free in Christ but we also got to think about those that don't know better verse 10 for if others see you with your superior knowledge like you know I know the truth but I'm better than you you know what I mean eating in the temple of an idol won't they incur be encouraged to violate their conscience by eating food that has been offered to an idol. So because of your superior knowledge, a weak believer for whom Christ died for will be destroyed. This is speaking about idols and this was something big at that time. Now let's talk about our time. Just because we see somebody that's not um, obeying the commandments or you know, or or doesn't know better, 
this this should apply to us. So because of our superior knowledge, a weak believer, right? For whom Christ died for, Christ died for him too, will we'll be destroyed. Instead of expressing love towards them, that way they can see Jesus through us. I'm not saying we agree with it, but I'm saying we can express love. God didn't agree the way we lived, and he still loved us and gave his life for us. And when you sin against other believers by encouraging them to do something they believe is wrong, you are sinning against Christ. So if what I eat causes another believer to sin, I will never eat meat again as long as I live. For I don't want to cause another believer to stumble. Wow, this is the Apostle Paul that, that says at the ending, that's it. That's all we have, you know, 10 minutes because the ch chapter is, is, is shorter. But that last verse touched me. So if what I eat causes another believer to sin, right? If, if there's somebody in front of me doesn't eat meat. <laughs> the Apostle Paul was willing to not eat meat for the rest of his life. He said, I will never eat meat again as long as I live for I don't want to cause another believer to stumble. That's all I have. So basically, if you enjoy this um, this portion of the Word of God that we ate, share it in your in your in your social media or whatever social media you have, so others can see it. You know, others can hear the truth. Because I didn't. Today was one of the shortest. Um, I didn't add anything to it or I got emotion to it about what I think because the Lord is perfecting me, believe it or not. When I first started, I was full of a lot of emotions. But the Lord is destroying as I eat the word day by day. It starts destroying that old nature, old emotion person. And then it can be like just the bread of life itself as it is written. Amen? So... I want to pray for myself and pray for you and let's pray together. That's even better to say, you know, because I know we all fall short from the glory of God some way or somehow we fail. So let's pray together and ask our Father, you know, to forgive us and confess our Lord Jesus as our Lord and, and remind Satan that he is destroyed. Amen. So let's bow our head. Let's pray to the Lord. Amen. Father God, Father who art in heaven, just like Jesus, Father, taught us to pray. He said, pray this way. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today, Lord, our daily bread. Forgive us. Father, forgive us for our trespasses. Forgive us for our sins. Forgive us and help us forgive and teach us how to forgive others when they offend us, Lord. Father, we ask you for the last thing in your prayer that you, Jesus taught us is, help us be free from the evil one. Help us not fall into the temptations of Satan. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The precious word of God is the power of the Holy Spirit that gives life. Amen.